let's look at how we can use weighted average cost of capital. Why it's important, how it's relevant. We've looked at how to compute it. Now that we've got it, what can we do with it? Important, important, important concept. When we're looking at a project, the appropriate cost of capital to use to analyze that project is based on the risk of the project. It's a concept we've talked about a lot this semester. Riskier projects have higher cost of capital. Safer projects have lower cost of capital. Remember, you've got your project. It's got some level of risk. Find financial securities like stocks and bonds with the same level of risk. What's their expected return? That's the cost of capital for the project. So a risky project gets compared to risky stocks and bonds. They have a higher expected return, higher cost of capital. Safer projects get compared to safer stocks and bonds. They have a lower expected return, lower cost of capital. This is where weighted average cost of capital comes into play. Suppose we have a firm that's looking at a project. If that project is just as risky as the assets of the firm, if that risk of that project is average for that firm, then an appropriate cost of capital for that project would be the firm's weighted average cost of capital. So it's not that the firm is doing the project and that's why its weighted average cost of capital is appropriate for the project. It's because the project has the same level of risk as what the firm is already doing. What the firm is already doing is reflected in its weighted average cost of capital and therefore the cost of capital for this particular project is the firm's weighted average cost of capital. Suppose the firm is looking at a project that is above average risk for the firm. So the firm's doing a bunch of stuff. This project is riskier than the stuff that the firm is doing. Then the appropriate cost of capital for this project would be greater than the firm's weighted average cost of capital. Again, weighted average cost of capital is appropriate for something that's just as risky as what the firm's doing here. It's above average risk for the firm. It's riskier than what the firm is doing. Therefore, the cost of capital should be greater than what you use for average. Therefore, it should be greater than weighted average cost of capital. What if the firm is doing a project that's safer than average? It's below average risk for the firm. The firm has a bunch of projects. The average level of risk is a certain amount for that firm. That is reflected in its weighted average cost of capital. This project happens to be safer, less risky than that average. Therefore, the cost of capital should reflect that relative level of safety. And the cost of capital would be less than the firm's weighted average cost of capital. So for a particular firm doing a project, that own firm's weighted average cost of capital serves as a nice benchmark and you can compare the risk of the project to the risk of, the, of what the firm's doing, and it kind of puts things on a scale. Remember, the risk of the project, that's why it's in red, determines the appropriate cost of capital for a project. The weighted average cost of capital of a firm is really useful. It's really helpful for figuring out the appropriate cost of capital for a project. But the cost of capital for the project depends on the risk of the project, not the firm doing the project. Very important to remember, project determines cost of capital for the project. One final note, we're going to assume that the level of risk and the expected cash flows for a particular project are the same for all firms. An implication of that is that the net present value is the same for all firms. So suppose you've got two firms. You've got firm A and firm B. And firm A is involved in a lot of risky activities so that its weighted average cost of capital is 18%. Firm B is involved in a lot of safe activities. So its weighted average cost of capital is 6%. And they're both looking at project P. Well, for both firms, Project P would have the same net present value because Project P has some expected cash flows associated with it. The level of risk of Project P would determine the cost of capital for Project P and the expected cash flows and the cost of capital for Project P 
I would determine the net present value of project P.